Hello, this is Jake from the Corona team and in this short how-to we're going to talk about scatter, pattern and displacement. Specifically, we're going to take a look at how to decide which feature to use for the task in front of you. So let's take a look at creating a grass field using each feature. We have our ground object and a small patch of grass from Chaos Cosmos. Scatter is very easy to set up. We can select it from the Corona menu and create a scatter object. And we can drag and drop our grass in as the object to scatter. And we can choose our ground as the distribute on. And then we can run an interactive render and straight away out of the box, we can see we get some pretty nice results. And we can continue to manipulate our grass with all the powerful tools within Scatter. So let's change the count to 200 for every meter and see how this looks. And notice how quick this was to set up. The setup time is something we want to keep in mind when deciding on which feature to use. The results are very realistic and the render takes 43 seconds at 15 passes on the 5950X. Next up, we can use pattern to cover a surface with 3D geometry, so it may seem like an ideal candidate for grass, but to get something that resembles the grass created from scatter, we need to spend some time tweaking the settings. So let's change the UV to X and Z, the crop box to 20 by 20 centimeters, so we don't get the dead areas in the corners of our patch of grass, and we can use the material from the pattern object, and we do want to render the base object, which is our ground, and over in the UVW space, let's turn the tiling up to 30 by 30 and hit interactive render. And now we can see the grass is looking very repeated. So let's stop that render and we can up the tiling to 40 by 40. And we can also use the UVW randomization to add some randomization to the offset and the rotation. And hit render. And whilst pattern takes less time to pass, the setup time takes longer than scatter and it renders in 38 seconds and it's harder to produce the desired results as you don't have as much control of the density, the crop box adds some limitations, and even with the UVW randomization, it still feels a bit more repeated than using scatter. Finally, for this grass section, the displacement can't really compete with scatter or pattern, and even though it renders pretty quick, the results barely look like grass. So in conclusion, if you want to create grass, scatter is your best bet, and whilst it's not as fast as pattern, it gives us the most visually appealing results, with the most customization and the least setup. Next, let's take a look at fabric on a cloth surface. And this is really the kind of thing that pattern is built for. We can just drag and drop that onto our fabric and let's change the UV plane to X and Z and drop our pattern piece on and run an interactive render. And we can see it creates great looking results. The geometry deforms nicely to the base object. And it's very easy to change the tiling by going to the UVW space. So it renders quickly with minimal setup required. The only drawback is the results are only visible at render time. Another way we could apply geometry to the fabric is with Chaos Scatter. And we can select the distribute on and our pattern piece. And let's turn the max limit up. Turn on avoid collisions. Under surface scattering, let's change the surface scattering to UV map and grid. Rotation Z to zero, reserve model rotation, and let's also change the scale to 50 and 50 and run a render. And even after all of this setup, the results are not near pattern. The instance objects have a hard time navigating corners as it does not deform to the object it's scattered on. And also notice that the pattern geometry has a hard time tiling. So with scatter, the setup is longer and it takes longer to pass and does not produce the desired results. Displacement produces better looking results than scatter if you have a good displacement map to accompany your material. You can also use an opacity map here as well to simulate the holes in the weave, something that pattern takes care of automatically. The displacement map is plugged into the displacement slot of the chrono material and has a max level of one centimeter. It renders quicker than scatter the setup is very simple if you have a good displacement map and it is only visible at render time. So if you're creating detailed fabrics, pattern produces the best results and requires minimal setup. So that brings us onto a good use for displacement. Brick wall is a great example of where displacement excels compared to scatter and pattern. Because we want to make sure the bricks are not uniform, something which pattern would produce, and to achieve something like this with scatter is not even worth attempting as we want randomization, but not to the extent that Scatter provides us with. The setup is easy as long as you have a good displacement map. 
Notice that on the corners it's added depth to the brick sprout and this would require a lot of setup to achieve in both scatter and pattern and displacement renders in a reasonable time. So when it comes to brick material, displacement is the clear winner. So scatter is best suited to scattering things such as rocks, trees and vegetation. Pattern is great for covering or replacing a surface with repeated 3D geometry and displacement creates geometry that deforms the surface using a texture visible at render time. And if you want to learn more about pattern then check out this video.